Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean from Space Shark Studios and I'm here to teach you visual scripting in Godot 3.1. Let's get started. So now we have our player animating, but he goes really, really fast. So in this lesson, we're going to teach you how to set some variables so you can control the speed that he is animating. So to start, we have to, of course, open up our player and go to the script. Once we are in the script, we are going to create is it four new variables. So the first variable is called animation speed. And this will be the number of animations that happen per second. So we're going to default this to two and we're going to make that export. Next, we have two internal variables. So this one is going to be cycles per animation frame. And that's the number of cycles, uh, like physics cycles that will happen, um, which is right now set to 60. We're going to make that an int. And remember, we have to do up and down or down and up to initialize this to zero. We are not going to export that. The next one is cycles since last animation frame. I know these are getting kind of wordy, but it's better for debugging later. This is going to be an integer as well. And this will actually be the number of physics cycles that will have happened since the last animation frame was updated. So if you remember over here in the sprite sheet, it'll be the time between going from the first frame to the second frame in cycles. And finally, we need to actually get how many physics cycles per second there are. Once again, that's an int. And right now, the game defaults to 60. But we want to make sure and set this to export because you can actually go into the project settings under the physics, I believe, and set how many frames per second. Oh, under common, you can see the physics frames per second you can actually set. So you don't want to end up with two things out of sync or else your character is going to be moving too fast or too slow. All right, we have our new variable set up, so it's time to add a new function. We're going to use a built-in function, so you have to use the little box with the arrow. Click on that, and we are going to use something called ready. Ready will run once when the object is first initialized in the scene. Since the object player starts in the scene, that means that when you press play, this function will run. To begin with, we need to look at kind of how are we going to fill in these two variables because these are internal, we need to set them. So we're gonna go back to math. So right now we have animations per second. That is something that we have already said has a value. So you remember we set animation speed which is going to be, let's just go ahead and change that to animations per second. Then we have frames per animation. And in the last lesson, we actually set that as frames per animation. Getting Using these two together, we can multiply them and we can get animation frames per second which is what we want because we want to be able to tell how many frames play in a single second. So we're actually going to use something here called comment in the available nodes. Comment allows you to make a big block of logic without having to use an extra variable um, to keep it all kind of nice and tidy. So this is going to be animation frames per second. And this is going to be animations per second times frames per animation. And we are going to actually, you can drag from here and type in multiply and it will make it into an integer for you. 
So we now have animation frames per second as kind of a halfway variable here. Let's move all this out of the way. And next, we are going to actually divide, not this one, but physics frames per second. So move this on top, move everything else below. We're going to divide the physics cycles per second by the animation frames per second. What this does is says, all right, we have this, which is the physics cycles per second, and we're going to divide it by the frames per second, which is the same as multiplying it by the number of seconds per frame, which is just this flipped upside down. This will get us the number of cycles per frame. And if we remember, we have cycles per animation frame. So we just hold control and drag this out. And now we have our cycles per animation frame. And that's it. That is all set up and ready to go. Now that we have that, we can go into our update animation variables and use cycles per animation frame to determine when we should be updating this current frame. So to start with, let's go ahead and move all of this out of the way. That looks kind of nasty, um, but let's move this over here. And we're going to disconnect it because we don't want our current frame to update every cycle like it's been doing. We actually only want it to update when our current animation frame or our cycles since last animation frame is greater than the cycles per animation frame. So what we're going to do is drag cycles per animation frame. We are going to add one to this because every frame update animation variables is called. So we want to add one to the cycles since last animation frame. Hold control and drag it out. And we now have one added to it. Once we've done that, we can say on condition, if the cycles per animation frame, no, if the cycles since last animation frame are greater than or equal to the cycles per animation frame, then we want to go ahead and update our current frame, but also reset our cycles since last animation frame to zero. So let's walk through this logic again. Every frame, we want to go ahead and say, let's add one to our cycles since last animation frame. And that's the cycles since the last time our current frame was updated. After we've added one, we check to see if the cycles since last animation frame are greater than the cycles per animation frame. If it is, then we want to reset cycles since last animation frame to zero to start that whole cycle again. And then we can go ahead and update our current animation frame. So let's see what this looks like. Oh, we have an issue and we forgot to reset this to zero again. And that is it. So always remember that you have to go and set these to zero because for whatever reason, Godot will default them to null or nil. But once you have that going, you have, now have smooth animations. If we wanted to go ahead and say, hey player, I want you to go 
five animations per second. There we go, we have some fast walking. It's not that bad. We can go one. And that's it. You now have a way to control your animation speed dependent on the number of animations per second, or uh, physics cycles per second your game is using. You can control it and change it to your heart's content. I'm gonna go ahead and reset this back to two. And if you want to check out the extra video after this, I'm going to be looking at a different way to animate your character using the animations that we used for the ball instead of, or uh, to the platforms, excuse me, using the animated sprites instead of using a sprite sheet like we did here. So go ahead and check out Lesson 20 Extras or go on to Lesson 21 and we're going to be going over having the platforms move around. And from there, collecting coins, updating score, and your game will be ready to go. Thank you for watching Space Shark Teaches. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and remember to click the bell to always stay up to date. Please also join us on our Discord, linked in the comments, and check out our other videos if you ever want to see what else we've been up to. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.